Good morning, folks. We've got the sun tilted 90 degrees here to view the departing filaments on the western limb. We've got the usual full suite of news, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star without major eruptive activity. Large dark coronal hole swinging through center longitudes. The solar flaring has been low as we don't really have any sunspots. Few umbral fields over surface magnetic regions here, but not the recipe for major storms. The solar wind remains calm, showing no signs of intensified streams yet. Interesting to note, we're about 48 hours past the phi angle shift expectation to 180. We did dodge past it thrice in that time, but have not sustained it. When it finally happens, we do expect that sharp rise in lithospheric tremor magnitude, and within about 36 hours, the faster solar wind from this coronal hole will arrive. Up next, we're in Ecuador. At Reventador, the volcano alert hits the ceiling as harmonic tremors from magma and incandescent light at the peak signify the coming eruption. Up next, we're going to Texas. Folks, for me in New Mexico, it was mostly a wind event following the morning snow, but it did feed a major storm system that is going to be even worse tonight. There is no way to rule out tornadoes from the system as it charges east. Let's go to the cosmic rays. We know they come from various sources, but the ultra-high energy ones, they think mostly come from the nearby Cygnus and Centaurus groups. While this has not changed, they now say that extragalactic magnetic fields are modulating how these particles enter our system, and they recognize that nobody has modeled that before. Amazing article about carbon cycling, putting CO2 increase around 4.75% with plants' carbon uptake at 3.75% increase, only 1% behind. But with more than a 1% potential error there, they may actually be overproducing based on the atmospheric changes. They do what everything else on Earth does when there's more food around. They eat. Folks, when an entire field of science goes hunting for something that is not there, eventually you get people hinting that there is a mistake. Like this one, which notes considerable conflict between observations of the real universe and the math of dark matter. And then another great paper on the swampland comes from heavy hitters at Chicago, about as heavy in this field as you get, demonstrating that the tension between observations of that real universe and that same math is, quote, troubling. Wanted to drop a personal favorite topic of mine, technological dystopia. Our best bet to pull back from the flashing rectangles in our hands is to recognize that they're dangerous. Also wanted to share a fascinating article on migrations across the globe, Kind of a shocking level of return migration from those who went looking for hope and didn't find it. Lastly here, the Western Antarctic Ice Sheet collapsed 125,000 years ago. Now while this story is an interesting one, it is also the place where some of the allegedly millions of years old ice samples were taken, which is impossible if it indeed collapsed more recently. The point is that their timing of the past is not so great. But we greatly appreciate your support. It's how these news come out every day along with the special releases. Time is short, less than 50 days until observing the frontier 2019. Tickets at otf.cells.com. It is the awake event of the year. We've got your wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.35 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.